end-of-life dates should be simple concepts. They mean that a piece of software or even hardware will no longer get any vendor-supplied patches or support past that date. But that barely scratches the surface of what it really means, and there's much more to consider. Let's talk about end-of-life misconceptions. Welcome to Linux Talks with Techscare. My name is João Correia, and I'm a tech evangelist with Techscare. In today's episode, we're going to go over the most common misconceptions people have about the end-of-life software. First, let's quickly go over what end-of-life means in the realm of software and hardware. When a product reaches its end-of-life, or EOL, it essentially means that the vendor has stopped providing updates, support, or security patches. But EOL isn't just a date on the calendar, it's a turning point. Many assume EOL is just the end for the vendor's involvement, however, for organizations using that software, it can signal the beginning of new challenges. Without regular updates, that software will no longer receive patches for newly discovered vulnerabilities. This makes it more susceptible to exploitation by cyber threats, turning into a possible entry point for attackers. EOL also means that the software won't evolve to meet the latest compatibility standards, creating potential integration issues with newer applications and systems. Beyond the technical side, EOL also brings compliance concerns. For industries bound by strict regulations, running EOL software may lead to compliance failures, especially in sectors like finance, healthcare or government, where outdated software is often non-compliant with security frameworks. Ignoring EOL isn't just risky for your security, it's risky for your entire business. In the following sections, we'll break down some of the biggest misconceptions around EOL. The false sense of security that unpatched software provides, the myth that only new software is compliant, and the options that many overlook when facing an end-of-life decision. When a product goes end-of-life, it's easy to believe you understand the immediate implications. Here's something that often goes unmentioned. If your organization uses software past its EOL date, it's likely out of compliance with almost every major cybersecurity regulation or industry standard. Because it affects two traditionally separate areas, compliance on one hand and IT on the other, it's easy to miss the very important point. Your ability to do business as an organization can be at risk by something very trivial like this. Imagine this, your infrastructure is sound, your patches are up to date, but the software reaches EOL tomorrow. Overnight, you're not compliant anymore, risking penalties, fines and the loss of trust. The disconnect between departments that deal with the business side of an organization and the IT team that focus on technical issues creates a gap in knowledge and visibility that, are, that is very dangerous. On a different level, security patches are a cornerstone of any organization's defense strategy, but once a product reaches its EOL date, those essential patches are gone. Any new vulnerability, no matter how critical, remains exposed. This is a contrast to the fact that the software itself will continue to operate just as it did before. The EOL date typically does not prevent you from running the software, nor does it crash the software or make it fail in any other fashion. It was running fine the day before the end of life, it will run fine the day after. Most many Management panels, unfortunately, won't even flag a warning for the affected application, since it didn't functionally fail. This can make it difficult to spot EOL if you're not paying attention to the relevant news, or don't have a form of alerting or reporting that takes it into account. But you won't have more updates, and no more fixes. When vulnerabilities are constantly emerging, an unpatched system is a sitting target. With all of this said, there's something that surprises many. An EOL date doesn't necessarily force you to upgrade or replace the software. There are third-party companies specialized in keeping EOL products secure and compliant, even in critical industries. Think of legacy systems like Windows XP in the military. They've been out of official support for over a decade, yet they're still secure, thanks to customized support contracts designed to keep it running. So, you're committed to a specific system or technology. Explore these options. Many organizations save considerable resources by maintaining legacy systems under third-party contracts. While third-party support can work wonders for software, things get complicated with hardware appliances. Many of these devices are proprietary, they're locked-down ecosystems, making updates difficult, if not impossible at all. What's worse, these EOL milestones are rarely discussed when negotiating with vendors. But think about it, when support ends, you're left with a device that may become unmanageable or incompatible with your security policies. Another aspect that's often overlooked is the hidden cost of EOL mismanagement. 
Running unsupported software might seem like a cost-saving measure initially, since you're dodging the upgrade or the replacement costs, but it can lead to budget-busting issues down the line, security breaches, compliance violations, and emergency migration expenses. Plus, emergency upgrades or replacements are never as smooth as planned transitions. Every minute spent scrambling to mitigate vulnerabilities or address compatibility issues means operational downtime and productivity loss. So, with all of this said, what can IT leaders do to minimize EOL disruptions? Here are a few steps. You can identify the key systems that are approaching EOL dates and start planning now. This is the most fundamental step you need to take if you haven't yet. A detailed, top-to-bottom list of all the software, either applications or dependencies like libraries or frameworks, drivers and operating systems, regardless of how important they are at face value, is the starting point to properly prepare. Evaluate third-party support options for legacy systems, especially if they're critical to your operations and cannot be easily replaced. Negotiate end-of-life terms when you acquire new systems or devices. Ask vendors about the planned support lifecycle and prepare your exit strategy when approaching the dates you deem appropriate, given the importance of the asset. This should include, for example, a replacement plan when you start and when to start implementing it. Prioritize migrating planning for software and hardware that lacks viable third-party support options. Establish contingency budgets for emergency replacements and upgrades to avoid financial strain in crisis situations. End-of-life milestones may seem like distant checkpoints, but ignoring them can lead to unexpected risks and costs. With the right strategy, you can navigate these dates smoothly, extend the life of legacy systems, and ensure ongoing security and compliance. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more insights on managing IT risks and strengthening your cybersecurity posture. Remember, YOL doesn't have to mean the end. Plan well, and you'll stay secure and compliant even when the original vendor support is long gone.